What if I told you you cannot trust all of your elders? That you should definitely respect them, but from afar, because they're not going to always give you the best advice. And some of them even just are toddlers that or high school students that like never grew up. Let's get into it on Bombastic Views. Welcome to Bombastic Views, the podcast where people might give the topics that I talk about side eye, but we're so here for it. Now, I do want to set a disclaimer, right? This is not directed to every baby boomer or every Gen X, okay? I am a millennial, so I have friends of all groups. Um, I have kids that are alphas. Um, Okay, so just understand that this is for the older generation, and I kind of want y'all to just have an open mind and hear what I'm saying in this podcast because it's not for everyone. Um, it's for the people who are of older generation who are not really setting a great example and knowing that there is no room for complaining um, if you're not being a part of the solution. Also, shout out to Gen Z. I do have a kid in that generation too. Sorry, I felt like that was needed to be said. But without further ado, let's get into this topic because it's super important to me. And I know that um, it's a very t a touchy topic and a confusing one maybe at, at that. But like I said, let's all keep an open mind and just pause and think and reflect. Also, guys, before I get into this episode, I do want to tell you that our June magazine is out. It is live, um, the, the digital one on Amazon. We are working on the paperback, but that will be done hopefully within a day or so. But um, you can definitely get our, our views. It's called Views, V-I-E-W-Z, Views Magazine on Amazon. And it's, uh, the June edition is released I'm working on July. That'll be released really soon on the 1st, hopefully. Um, but yeah, guys, we have interactive QR codes. We have giveaways, um, makeup collabs, all types of stuff that you don't want to miss. Okay, now into the juicy stuff. Now for the juicy stuff. Uh, have you guys ever heard the saying, respect your elders? Yes, no. It was very much something that was pushed almost I want to say pushed forced on me when I was a kid um, which was very hard because there were a lot of adults around me that were supposed to be protecting me were supposed to be loving on me um, and treating me like a child but they weren't protecting me they weren't treating me like a child and they very much were harming me in traumatic ways so I always struggle with that saying respect your elders because in my situation I didn't have respect for my elders um, and then that's why they would call me or I would come across to off as like disrespectful um, when really it was more so fed up that no one was being an advocate for me as a child and even the fact that I was knowing that I need an advocate as a child, very young, very young. I want to say like as soon as four years old, I'm thinking, I remember thinking, this is kind of weird. And then like five years old, I'm just like, okay, I obviously was uh, summoned into this family that I obviously should have no business being in because detrimentally to the mentality, mental. I'm going to be a messed up uh, adult. Like, I remember thinking this as a kid. I don't, I cannot explain why. I don't know how, but that's what I was thinking. Then it went, then it went to, okay, well, you know, when I got older, like eight years old, I was like, okay, that's okay. Life is crazy. The elders around me are crazy. But when I have my kids or when I have family, everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be dandy. But it wasn't. It wasn't because I was still, I was an adult at this point, still surrounded by toxic individual elders, people who were like 13 plus years older than me, or I want to say, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, 10 plus years older than me, um, acting as if I had to be the bigger person or the older person, the more mature person, and 
I've been put in a lot of situations that I was just not ready for as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult. Um, and but <laughs> lest my family did not hesitate to make sure that I knew what struggle and pain and hurt was. And they were my elders. And I said, OK, it's all right. It's all right. I'm a move. I'm a move. I was like 25. I'm like, I'm going to move from my family and I'll be okay. I'll move away from the toxic elders that I'm around. And what happened? I found more toxic elders. People who were like, I mean, baby boomers. And like, I'm just sitting here because I'm just like, <sighs> like y'all complain a lot about the younger generations, but I really, I digress. Like, I think that we need to focus on y'all because what's happening here y'all are supposed to be leaders and yet it's giving unhealed unaddressed trauma and it very much so like hurt my motherhood like me as a mother I had more kids I grew up I had more kids and I was around more people who wanted to tell me what to do as a parent instead of um teaching me telling me what to do did you hear me telling me what to do instead of teaching me um taking from me and doing taking my babies out of my hands and doing it themselves instead of showing me physically okay um and it was just to the point where if I said something people didn't agree with my my parenting because I didn't agree with their traditional slave mentality um of treating children who are eventually going to grow up and be adults they don't they didn't agree with that me parenting like that trying to have them have freedom as children was too much to fathom Th them as old school mothers they could not fathom that I wanted to implement freedom in my children they didn't like that and still don't like that I let my kids have individuality and have choices and can do with you know mostly what they want to do if it's not hurting them and if it's not hurting their mental and their long you know the long haul but we're gonna get more into it so I figure that we do it traditionally I'm gonna break down some statistics okay um, and then we're gonna go from there and see how and more of why you have to just literally be careful of the elders that you choose to take advice life advice and and dedication um, from and 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 services from because there are a lot of old elders that are there for you that want to see the younger generations thrive and they want to do their part and be leaders and there are um there are older generations that uh wouldn't mind bestowing toxic traits that they had they didn't even care about breaking or um don't realize that they're doing because they were hurt when they were a child and so they um so then they just like pretty much um make you want to make you inherit their insecurities and so we will get into that why you need to just be very selective of the elders that you take advice life advice from because not all elders are there for you and just like you got to be aware of the toxic people that are your age or younger you need to protect yourself and watch out for the people who are toxic and older than you so i do want you guys to be aware that um there is something called ageism which by definition on google it is prejudice or discrimination on the grounds of a person's age um so like you you know like have a problem with like older people and you say how they all can't you know work electronics which is obviously not true or saying that all younger people are lazy which is obviously not true and now this word does kind of wrap into the topic i'm talking about today but it's not necessarily the main topic because aside of ageism there's also just this um thing within <clears throat> individual people 
where they cannot control their toxic behaviors or traits or maybe they think that they mastered something in life when they were younger when they were that person's age and it's not necessarily true they like didn't really heal or they didn't really learn from that lesson and then think they have the room to give younger generations the same advice and as I say that I just googled and found out that there are actually three types of ageism micro level which is individual meso level which is uh, social networks and then macro level which is institutional or cultural so I found a website called Pew, which is P-E-W Research Center, uh, or but the website is called PewSearch.org. Um, but let's get into the statistics they have on their website. And their article is called Generations Apart and Together. It says a Pew, a Pew Research Center survey released earlier this summer found that 79% of the public says there is a generation gap defined in the question as a major difference in the point of view of younger people and older people today. That's nearly 20% points higher than in 1979 when the same question was asked in a national survey by CBS, the New York Times, and it's marginally greater than 74% of adults who reported a generation gap in 1969. Okay. It even states how there used to be a phrase, I've never heard it before, but it says, don't trust anyone over 30... So to break that down, uh, the survey specifically asked whether or not young people and older people differ on eight core values or traits, which were their work ethic, moral values, religious beliefs, racial and social tolerance, uh, tolerance, musical preferences, use of new technology, political beliefs, and the respect they show others. Which, like I said, I'm not surprised because it says in, a, in, a, in addition, the new survey attempted to find out whether these differences translated into conflicts between the generations. Which, you know, yeah, yes. So they literally gathered all folks from different ages and was like, hey, you know, um, what are your beliefs on this? And... <laughs> It came out that <laughs> more than half of the values were that had a huge difference between the age gaps. So I'm going to I'm going to read you the, you know, values or different um, core values, like I said, that people were gathered to have a survey done on. And this is more than 50 percent which were very different. So things that were very different, the way they use computers and new technologies, that was over 73% way, very different um, between the generations. The music they like, okay, 69%. 58% was the work ethic. That was very different between the, di the generations, those values. Uh, the moral values were 54%. And then the respect they showed to others was 53%. So 43% was like political views, which is like almost very different, almost over more, very different, but almost more than 50, almost. Uh, the religious beliefs, 41 percent and then the attitudes towards different races and groups was about 34 percent different okay so yeah so here we go where i have my issues with statistics and maybe that's just because i am very justice based and like did we really do good research and i don't mean to question anybody's research i just understand the social the real social from like aspect from a black woman as opposed to or you know even just someone who is not um white perspective of what is going on in the world that does not really get talked about so i'm just really like iffy with some statistics and like yes they are there they are fact 
fact based, but to an extent and to a certain amount of people. So it's kind of very tricky, you know. Um, but it's either way, it says the, uh, the survey is equally clear that these differences have not translated into serious conflicts. Only about a quarter of the public, 26 percent, says there is strong conflict in society today between the young and old. Um, then it says, by contrast, far higher shares she see strong social conflict today between blacks and whites, which is 39%. Um, and then rich and poor, 47%. And immigrants and the native born, 55%. Meantime, inside the home, though, because that is like a different setting, right? Uh, something approximate, uh, approximating peace seems to have broken out between parents and teenagers. According to the survey, parents today are having fewer serious arguments with their children and are spending more time with them than their own parents did with them a generation ago. So I won't bore you with any more statistics. Um, but that one I can definitely attest to, um, AKA breaking generational curses and, and bad habits, generational bad habits. I can attest to that. My testimony is that my mother and my father were both very not present in my life. And when they were, we, I had very bad memories of being in their presence. Now that didn't mean all the time that. I was in their presence. I had a bad experience, but there was always some kind of crazy story that I had or some kind of crazy situation they brought me in that was not appropriate for a child. Um, and I would always, like I said, be old, like an old thinking child sitting there saying, why are y'all acting like children? And I'm the one acting like the adult. This is not OK. Um, but long story short, I had my own kids and it was just like, wow, I am in, I'm in charge of these beautiful beings. Um, I have got to give them a great life and I couldn't really give them the best life because I'm still poor, like still poor. Okay. Um, <laughs> but back then I was really poor. And so it was just like, I had to find enjoyment and free things. And I still do like now. Cause like I said, I'm still poor y'all. Um, but that was the fun thing about it was having fun with my kids, taking them to do things that I don't think I've really ever done as a kid. And just like that healed me so much my inner child so much like I still struggle with my own you know demons and stuff but being a good mother and being a mother that was present and being a mother and I'm still this way like I'm not as much this way because we don't have a car but you know I still find ways to do things that are innovative and I spend time with them and that's that's all I can wish for is that I am I am talking to my kids with um knowledge and Yes, they drive me up a wall, okay? My oh, they're my kids. They're my kids. They're supposed to. They're supposed to. Um but I just I don't see it getting that deep for me to make them feel like they can never go anywhere. They can never have a a peace of mind, a safe home, a safe space. And so, um yes. That is so true. I spend more time with my kids than I can even think about my my parents ever spending with me. Like I don't remember spending much time with my parents. I don't have many memories of that. And when I hear other people's stories that are a little bit older than me, like, you know, 10 plus years, um, they tell me the same thing. Like, hey, my mom had to, like, back in, like, the 70s and 80s, my mom used to have to work really hard and, like, leave us at home with our older sibling and work her butt off, and so, like, we never got to see her. So, like, that still was, like, abandonment. I mean, no offense to anyone, but that is a sense of abandonment because that parent didn't have support, enough support to be able to efficiently enjoy their motherhood and so that is deep but it's real it's more like it's like as if like we started out 
eons ago with great leaders. And then as the generations went down and trickled, there was less compassion, less teaching your kids how to do things, less um, bestowing wellness, mental wellness, um, health wellness into your children um, and and actually raising them. And that's that's easier said than done. But um, like I said, it's like the generation that had their kids in the 70s and 80s, where were their parents? Um, the parents didn't really care to be nurturing and caring for their grandchildren. Most of them, some of them, but most of them that I know. And that is actually very disheartening when you think about like how cavemen used to have, like cavemen and like, and even just like natives, um, years and decades and centuries ago family was family family stuck together whatever family need family got but then like the years it that all dwindled away no supporting family members like literally hence when i think that silly little phrase out of my house at 18 was born which is ideally very silly to me because um you're fresh out of high school you need support. You need your mom. You need your dad. You need your family. You don't need to be on your own. Mental illness. Depression. Burnout. I'm just saying. It's at a high. And I do also want to make sure I say this is in 2009. This survey was... Um, so I can only imagine how it is now. So I do want to also make that disclaimer. But they were like, hey, 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 we'll do a pie chart. We'll do a pie chart of, you know, an add up of all of these numbers we have and all of these, you know, people that we asked questions to. And we're going to do a pie chart. And according to this pie chart, <laughs> these pie charts, um, the older generations, okay, have more have better values when it comes to moral values, worth ethic, and respect for others. Which, I mean, I've witnessed younger generations personally. Um, like I said, I have a teenager, and um, the younger generations very much don't care about cursing in front of anybody. Let me just tell you that. Um, some of them don't, but I have my way of being like, hey, headphones, something. I don't need to hear it. Um, I don't want to, you know, control anybody else's kids, but I can't control mine. So please put headphones on, ma'am, miss ma'am. Thank you. Um, so like I can see that. And then I've even gotten to like almost like full, actually not almost full blown arguments with kids who were bullying her um, to the point where I'm just like, where is your parent? I, I'm not I don't even want to argue with you. I simply am just telling you that you should be a better person because the things that you're doing and saying haunt you when you get older like karma. Come on, stop. I'm not trying to give you karma. I'm not in charge of the karma department. I don't care about getting licks back. But the universe do baby take it easy. Take it easy. So I could see that. I could see that. But I have seen some very well-mannered. And like I said, my, my my kids, my teenager, my kids are very respectful to to elders um, to the point where I've even had elders, believe it or not, tell me they don't like it when my kids call them sir or ma'am or miss. They didn't like that. They were like, can you can you tell your kids to stop calling me ma'am? or miss because like I'm 39 <laughs> I'm no one's man and I'm just like that is a weird flex but I'll let you have it I'll just tell my kids not to talk to you at all because they were trying to show you respect and you're obviously toxic <laughs> But also, just like I, I predicted, 
the racial tolerance. The racial tolerance, the older generation is down bad. And like I said, this was 2009. Okay, this was this was pre um Brianna Taylor, okay? This was pre the Black Lives Matter um, protests, pre-George Floyd incidents, okay? So, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. I've witnessed it. I've witnessed it get worse, personally and for my kids, because my kids are mixed, but they still get a lot of racism um, from believe it or not, the older generation. Like, there are kids that, like, have been racist and mean to my kids as far as, like, even spitting on them and being, like, really rude um, to the point where I threatened to press charges on kids because you should not be doing that. But the school was very much so not reporting it. I had to actually rely on my children's word of mouth and, 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 being able to trust me and coming to me to tell me that these things were happening. So there were very much adults of the of the older generation that were saying things to me like, uh, well, your daughter shouldn't be, you know, um, having headphones on at this time. And I'm like, you allow headphones, right? You just don't like that she's listening to Asian music, which you don't like. She don't like you don't like that she likes BTS because the kids in the classroom are snatching headphones out of her ear and you're allowing them to. You watched it. You've seen it. She told me plenty of times. I don't know what's happening here. But yes. Um, and like I said, personally, I've witnessed it. I've been called the hard ER word. I've been told that I, I need to have my ID shown to somebody who was not a police officer. This person was random and saw me in an alleyway. It was just like, I need to see your ID. And I'm just like, ma'am, an older woman. I'm like, ma'am, no, I'm not a child. Um, I've had people ask me multiple times if my children were my children or if I uh, just like, you know, took them. And I'm just like, you know, that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. Older people. Um, I've had people just come up to me and just, I mean, no warning, just um, go right in my hair. So older people. Uh, <laughs> I will have to agree with that. Uh, I've heard so many things that I can't, I like, I, I could go on. I could go on, I can go on. I've been, I've witnessed racism from older people, like teachers and, and principals and whatnot. When I was a child, I've had br police brutality happen to me, obviously older people, when I was seven. So I can totally see that. And this was 2009, like I said, pre Breonna Taylor, pre George Floyd, pre protests, it's worse. But what scares me is that it's worse because it's not just the older generation. Now. I feel like the number has gone up in the younger generation because I've, I've been called the hard ER words by younger people. Kids. Kids. Like I said, my children had to deal with being called the hard ER and having their hair pulled and having headphones ripped out their ears and being spat on and being choked physically where people were like, I didn't see a thing. I don't know what you're talking about. My, you're, I didn't see your kids get abused every single day. And I'm just, <laughs> so let's have an open mind to a lot that's happening right now. But for sure, the older generation, um, it says, statistically they have a harder time with understanding racial things and having racial tolerance well alrighty then it is time for a video we are going to um, look at this video that talks about generational gaps in the workplace and how this individual deals with it so without further ado uh, this is called this is from a channel on YouTube called Bridging the Generational Gap. Super cool, super cool. And here we go. We're going to get it. we're going to get started. 
Pretty cool though. I'm here today to talk to you about bridging the gap, get it? Bridging the gap between generations in the workplace because every single workshop that we do, we hear comments, frustrations, complaints about these generational differences in the workplace and how difficult it is to work together, how difficult it is to communicate. And I want to offer a couple of tips that I have learned through doing these workshops and also in working with different generations myself. So I know it's frustrating, okay? And I hear comments all the time like, this generation is that way and that generation is this way. And, you know, you'll hear comments like, they're lazy, they're entitled, they don't communicate well. And the first tip that I'll give you is suspend your assumptions. Suspend your assumptions because if you're assuming something about a person based on when they were born, then what you're doing is you're stereotyping and you're prejudging them. And I learned this from my good friend, Joe Levy from Embassy Consulting, who's an expert in this. When you stereotype and you prejudge someone, which is normal, but if you act on that stereotype or that prejudice, that becomes discrimination. And that's actually damaging. So if you're acting on it based on the fact that somebody was born in a certain year, they may or may not be that way. So you're putting them in a box when you're stereotyping. And you know this as well as I do, that people are different, regardless of when they were born. So suspend your assumptions is number one. The second tip is try to meet people where they are at because people are in a different place in their life. They had different upbringings, different life experiences, regardless of their generation. So try to understand who they are, get to know them, have conversations with them about things other than work to the degree that they're comfortable with. Try to build a bond with that person and understand who they are as a person. And you should then be able to overcome any of those differences in how you communicate or how you think, or they always have to ask why. You should be able to overcome that stuff if you form those relationships and try to meet people where they are. Is it their responsibility to adapt a little bit to you? Yes, of course. But it's your responsibility as a leader to adapt to them as well. And hopefully you'll be able to improve that relationship and improve the team overall. So I know it's frustrating, but try to suspend your assumptions and try to meet people where they're at. And you're gonna it's gonna make your job easier in the long run, trust me. That's all I have for you today. I hope you have a great day. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. Yes, yes. Okay guys, so you heard what this king said. He is letting y'all know that there are ways to bridge that gap. Um, So we are going to talk more about, like I said, how to kind of take things like a grain of salt from people of the older generation that may be a little bit not healed uh, from whatever that happened to them, right? You can kind of tell it. um, We're going to learn how to take that with a grain of salt, um, and then also the people who are pouring love in you onto you and just um, supporting you, um, sharing your craft or sharing you with their friends who are of older generation um, and younger generation, you know. Uh, so we're going to learn what to take from this whole generational gap and how respecting your elders is very much important. You should respect all of your elders. You should respect everyone, but um, you don't need to take advice from everyone, old or not. Now it's time for some poetry. Now it's time for some poetry. Justice at your service. Okay, so not to toot my own horn or whatever, but um, <laughs> when I make these poems, I do them the minute of recording and in under 10 minutes. So what that means is like, I literally just pressed pause to finish typing up what I was thinking before I started recording. So, um, and so then that like takes like under 10 minutes. So, you know, just, just saying, just saying, it takes me about 10 minutes to make a little poem. So here we go. It says to all generations, young and old, you gotta really take care of your soul. Just because you get older in years doesn't mean you healed trauma or faced your fears, but you can do it because it's never too late or early. This your life journey. So how you want to turn it, have good morals like we had or turn your back on them. You going to spread love or be a hater taunting. Us younger folks need guidance and so do you. 
because somewhere along the way, we lost sight of truth. And though the truth hurts, at least you're still being true. Generations young and old, please take care of you. All right, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, But like I said, it's time to heal the trauma that was bestowed upon us. Um, Older generation, y'all are very much in charge of us 30 and 40 year olds still. It does not end at 18. Okay. Um, We very much still need you. Um, And I'm sorry that some of you experienced your parents not being able to be there for whatever reason. Um, But just know that you find family within um, the people you choose. So I just feel like if you maybe unlearn some of the past um, false statements and, and ideas that people had back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, then maybe the world will be just a little bit better because then we can feel like um, we have guidance because somebody who is 31 years old who has kids and grew up in the 90s and, you know, early 2000s, okay, Um, it was very hard growing up through that era not having my parents not understanding why I didn't fit beauty standards of America um and but now that I'm a parent now that I have the chance and opportunity I want to teach them as much good as possible and break generational curses and and generational bad habits because they exist but I do also want to talk to you guys about my song, Lifeline, I have out. It is live on, um, let's see, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, not Spotify yet, but iTunes, um, pretty much all of the like social media platforms that are even like not based in the U.S. So please check it out. It's called Lifeline. This is, I'll play you a snippet of it here, Lifeline. Um, my artist name is Daya, D E Y A exclamation point. Yeah. And internet is like, girl, bye. Like I said, guys, please check that song out. I think you'll like the whole song. I don't want to give you all of the goodies here. So, um, but yeah, check that out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all those places I said. And I hope you enjoy. Wait, also, how can I forget? I will be having a music video coming up for that song as well. All right. So just as promised, um, we're going to get into my experience and why I very much go off of not um respect your elder elders but like respect your elders but be cautious with who you take advice from because not everybody is healed who are older point blank period and more so also like also like protect yourself from people because I feel like um, there's this big stereotype of like stereotype of like if someone is an older individual, they will protect you. They will grant you peace and be a safe space. But that is very much changed uh, like generations ago in the aspect of like it's not so easy to come by. Like, yes, there are still people who are caring and loving Um, of the older generations but there are people who think they are being caring and loving because they're older and they're not they're actually very much um, like bestowing insecurities onto the younger generation and fears and 
I know that when I signed up for doing this podcast that it was going to be deep and hard and very personal to me. So you don't have to worry about me, guys. I am an open book. My story is to help others who have nowhere else to go. Like they feel lonely as heck because no one wants to listen to them or because people dismiss them don't believe them whatever the case may be that is what my platform is for that is what this podcast is for so I know this is going to be difficult (laughs) and I will not mention names um of who these people are but I will in some situations explain who they are to me because that part is important that the fact of the fact of who they were to me um their role family member wise who they were to me was very detrimental and important so those stories though that yeah I have no shame um but (laughs) but the other people who were elders who didn't really give me the best advice um I will I will they will remain nameless they will just know who they are probably if they listen to this which I doubt they will because that is one struggle I have been facing from my elder generation family members and family friend members and friends of the family members and all types of stuff like that is support um i don't really get it i don't really get much support like yes i get a like here and there on my facebook from family members but i don't get like my youtube channel watch to help towards watch time I don't get the likes and shares on on any of my YouTubes or or TikToks or anything like that. Um, I just get DMs of of asking why am I not talking to people and I'm just like, come on, bruh. (laughs) Um, But like, I just I just don't have any elderly family members pouring love into me, encouraging me. All they do is go on my on my Facebook. I'm sorry, my Facebook and be like great job every now and again every every like full moon right but it's heart is disheartening because i see the people who are close to them are important to them within the family um they are getting more love and attention and like getting you know love poured on them and i get to see that because i am the friends of the cousins and the aunts and the whoever's and the uncles and the you know you know you know i see it all okay so i'm gonna try to do a speed round of this from um least serious thing an elder older person has done or said to me to worst so the first thing i want to talk about real quick is when i moved to a town that was a very small town (laughs) um and i remember speaking to this like one of the first white women that I came across in that town and I was just telling her like how excited I was to like be in a new place with my kids and how um I plan on doing really good things while I'm here she's like oh yeah well like what are you gonna do and I'm just like I plan on number one turning that like I pointed to a building that like was said for rent for like super cheap because it's in the middle of nowhere um for rent i'm like i'm gonna turn that place into a dance studio for the community and whoever wants to be there and she's like ah okay okay, yeah yeah yeah, yeah." as long as it's not one of those like twerking and nasty dancing place like classes (laughs) what Another one is where in that same town there was a wedding and um, (laughs) I was invited to it because I happened to be a family member or the friend of the family because I was dating who I'm dating now. So it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, they're having a wedding, you're invited. And then I was proceeded to be told um, to not worry about dressing up so much because they're it's just a wedding it's just you know it's just a wedding i thought we dress up for weddings so then after i later on like digested what happened that just meant to me that i was very pretty (laughs) and that uh people were afraid of me out shining the the bride it later came out um and which was funny because I unfortunately 
decided to be the bigger person and go to the wedding uh, in a barn dress that was like sunflower yellow with some flip flops and my fro. So I wish I would have I wish I would have went as a diva. But the funny part is I still outshined the bride. <laughs> But anyway, let's get into the juicier stuff. So um, I am uh, like 11 years apart from my sister. So um, she would just like always like she would never stick up for me. That was something that was a big thing. We're like 11 years apart. Um, and so like while she was in like high school and like about to graduate for college, I was still playing Easy Bake Oven and Barbies. But she never had my back when like as we got older um when me and her friends had a falling out where it was it was crazy because i'm just like i have your back all the time and i stick up for you all the time um but it was just like a thing where it's like i didn't feel like i was the little sister i was a little big sister and she even would joke about that sometimes like girl you're the little big sis you're the little big sis and i'm like that is not a flex my love like there are so many situations that um I had to like tell you what's best for you <sighs> so yeah she uh she was she was a, she's a generation x so yeah okay so I saved the last um the best for last for baby boomers my my mother <laughs> um this podcast is too short for me to even go into everything that my mother has um done or said to me that truly changed me as a person for the worse um but this is my first you know influence woman wise and so I didn't have much of that because she would say things to me like I look homeless or I should be more like the girls who were already sexually active but weren't even in high school yet um and i just was like there's clearly a misunderstanding here um i don't think you want me to be like that but she insisted so um i did not fall for that but it still was like dang you don't even know mom dukes like i don't even want to be like those people um and then just the fact that I remember when I did go, um, I got pregnant early um, and then I went to try to go like graduate and she just made that whole process very hard. It's like she was so mad that I got pregnant while I was in high school, um, you know, with good reason. But to the point where she tried to ruin my life, my future my future plans for me and my baby and what that looks like was like she would tell me I would never be anything like as I'm doing this as the teachers are like you know going to my house my her apartment and you know doing study hall or studying like with me um so that I could get good grades and graduate even though I was carrying a baby and then had giving birth to one um Shout out to the teachers who did that, by the way. I love you. Um, and I graduated with, like, I, I was at 3.7 um, grade point average. So, like, w like one of the top people um, in my class. And I went to medical assistant school as a medical assistant and graduated. But she didn't make that any, like, she didn't make that easy at all. Um, she could have paid for my test the day of my test for the medical assistant thing. Like, thank God my teacher still let me walk, but the test was $90. She decided, she decided to spend that $90 the day of my test so that I couldn't take the test, um, and couldn't get certified. She just did, she just, she's gotten my kids taken from me and thrown into CPS or like, her take the one child because they were uh, my oldest daughter is all black but then like my middle daughter she was just like no she can go to foster care like that's how y'all gotta be careful who you take advice from because it be your own birth givers the people who give birth to you that do not care or love you or treat you with respect so you just gotta like say f these um 
like these standards that others give you of, oh, you only get one mom or, oh, you need to respect your elders because sometimes those elders don't deserve respect. Sometimes those elders are wacko with all no respect. I'm sorry, like for real. So yeah, like anyone who is older than you, who isn't, who like their words don't hold value. They're just like words of like chaos or destruction or um, immaturity. Do not fall into that just because you're, you know, society standards are like, oh, you know, listen to your elders. And because no, them elders, some elders will have you messed up, honey. Okay. And so you just got to be careful. The ones that love you, you'll be able to tell. And so let's talk about some like what, like not toxic, like what healthy behaviors from an elder person looks like. Those are the type of people you want to take heed and advice to from it ain't nothing like having an elder person an older person um tell you you're doing a good job that feels like gold when i have a random woman come up to me that is well in her wise wonderful seasoned years and she's just like you are your kids are so happy like you you look beautiful too like you guys are doing you're doing such a great job and don't even know me um who okay um and then to like i don't really hear much from people who do know me but that's okay if you know an artist um or a musician you know share out their music and their artwork to your friends because just because they're you know older like a baby boomer or you know gen x that doesn't mean that they may not like the music or the artwork of your loved one um but don't just share like I know too many people who are in my life that share my stuff but in person they're completely different so um don't do that that doesn't count as being supportive you can share out the wazoo and still be very mean and tasteless around that person and that makes you look bad that gives off disrespectful vibes that you're just around to look good to the public but around that younger person you appear insecure or mean or have an issue don't be like that you know um show full support support online and to your friends and also in person with that person so my camera um and my microphone is dying so you guys get this voice (laughs) i hope you guys can hear really well um and i'm sorry about that but it's been a weird it's been a weird week it's been a weird week um but anyway so also things that look like supportive um, supportive behavior, supportive habits from the older community. When you see a mother, um, when you see a mother with their children, don't just take the child, don't just take the baby, don't just say, "I let me show you or let me, I got this. You can do it in a very calm, nurturing way, okay? it's very easy you can you know address it in many different ways but even if that mother does not want your help it is not the end of the world um it is okay (laughs) when someone um like who looks like me who's black that um or you know um latinx uh or native american telling you like hey this is this is going on in my life don't dismiss it and compare it to donald trump stuff Um, or stuff that you heard him say or anything that you heard or in the past or because it's just it's just dismissing and putting more of a bridge in between us because you may not understand what's happening right now in the world but that's okay but to have a voice or be silent um anymore is is wrong um and even more wrong when you dismiss someone who's like who's a part of that community um who's telling you this is what's going on and you're just like ah we had we we don't even what are you talking about that's not a problem that's not a problem donald trump said we don't we don't care what he said we don't care what that person said 
or that one or that one or that one. We just want to talk to you and vent to you. We don't need you to compare politics to how I'm feeling. You just don't. Um, and that's just life. And I just, I need people to rein it in a little bit. Um, being supportive by listening. Listening, listening, listening. You are a fool when you don't listen to people. When you don't open these up and be like, oh, wow, what is this person's perspective on this? I asked the question, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to listen and I'm going to learn because that's all you can do when you're hearing from that community. You ask that community a question, but then you don't want to want to hear the answer. You want to argue. That's not supportive. So let's learn from that. And um, can we be nice to the younger women? Like tell them that they're beautiful. Tell them that they're doing a great job. Every time I see a younger woman that is doing the dang thing, I'm like, yes, honey, you got this. Keep going because I, I needed that. And in my 20s, I needed that in my as a little kid. I needed that as a teenager. And so this is my life goal is to bestow love onto the people younger than me and then take care of the people who are older than me because that's how life goes, you know? Um, and learn from the people who are older than me. That's how life goes. That's how it's supposed to be. Somehow, some way, somewhere, we got lost in the world, in our ways, in society, in rude, ignorant beliefs, in being blind to all the division that ha has been going on for eons. I think it's time for us all, whatever age you are, to just like learn how to be supportive to each other and, and learn what ways we can help each other, not what we don't like about each other. Um, and also realizing that, yes, you do have a responsibility when it comes to people who are younger than you, regardless how old they are. You could be 90, you still have to be responsible for the 60 year olds. Like in my eyes, that's what I'm feeling like. The 90-year-olds can teach something to the 60-year-olds. The 60-year-olds can teach something to the 40-year-olds. The 40-year-olds can teach something to the 20 year -olds. Okay, like, we all in this together. We all can teach and learn. We all got this, okay? All right, rent under a minute. So, um, let's, let's, yeah, let's put the, let's, let's, let's kumbaya this. Okay, let's let's stop devising and dividing each other because we all need each other for sure. I don't want to hear about how old people can't control um, technology because young people, you can get out there and help our elders learn technology if you have, if you think they have a problem with it. Uh, older people, if you have um, a problem, you think we're lazy, you think... <laughs> you think we lazy help us get paid because y'all be having friends that know a friend of a friend that needs to uh, needs an assistant that pays about 30 to 40 to 40 an hour i know about two three single mothers non-single mothers that need that right now i am one so don't gatekeep how about that okay let's 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 spread the love let's spread the love okay so then like i said moral of the story moral of the story is that, um, yes, you want to respect your elders, okay? Like I said, you want to respect everyone. We're all here. We all have a purpose. Um, but some elders just don't have your best in interest, and that is okay. But we need to drop ideas of, oh, like, listen to all your, all your elders because they've been here for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. So they must know the way because that is not true. My, like I said, my whole mother had me out here looking crazy, y'all. There's still people out here walking around thinking I done, like, did the most horrible, horrific things because she's mental and she's, even though she's older, she's not okay in the head. So she makes up lies to get attention because she's a narcissist. So you just got to like be careful, okay? There's so many underlying factors in people's lives that you have to understand that they are just not capable of giving the correct information and advice to you. 
regardless how old they are and who they are role wise in your life i love you that's why i'm here to give you the good advice that nobody wants to give you or talk about because it's too hard to talk about it all right guys well just like that this episode is over it is a wrap but don't like don't miss out because i have an episode every sunday today is monday you know i kind of like you know i'm a little late by a day and i do apologize for that but don't miss out guys also remember you can email me at variety views with a z variety views with a z um you can email me there to um you know request to be a guest on the podcast and also, like, topics to cover. Um, send me some ideas, and I'm, I might just be able to cover it, okay? So, I encourage you guys to do that, to email us and stay connected. Also, if you guys have any promotions that you want to um, pay to have um, be in the podcast as a shout-out, please let me know. I'm also now opening to that as well to try to help, you know, um, the business make some more money to go towards some more awesome content. That'll be amazing. So definitely, um, if you're interested, that is a thing. Other than that, guys, it is a wrap. I will see you again the, the same time next week, okay? Be kind to each other and love on yourself, okay? Hold on, let me turn this off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please get on your knees and swear to me. You keep calling me. Wow. <laughs>